Hello, listeners. And welcome back to Season 9, Episode 28 of the Yodafus Podcast. It's us. Yeah. It's us. I'm Dio. Yay. We haven't had you here in a while. It's been a little I know. Bit. It's been a little while. The day it's of pretty deal. amazing how we can uh, miss Jay for one episode and forget this man exists. Yep. <laughs> But we haven't had Dio for like 10 episodes, and and we love you. Aw, well, I love you guys, too. It's good to be back. We know who you love the most, but I I vote for second favorite. (laughs) Yes, exactly. This is a a battle royale for for second and third place. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) She's bigger than me. Shoot. Yeah, it's been a little bit. I've been off in in my in my my house jail, like many people, preparing for the Oda Fest because it is upon us. It is. It is. At time of this recording, only three weeks away. No, yeah, less than thirty days. No, it's a little scary. Panic. Now first, we've got something to tell you, dear listener. Do you need a break? A bite to eat. Come and enjoy the Maiden Butler Cafe and have a kawaii time. Tickets are available now only online. And we are already 50% sold out. Get your tickets to the Maid Cafe now at odafest.com slash cafe. Gasp. Kya, kawaii. It's a kawaii time. Yes. What time is a kawaii time? What o- the kawaii What What o- time? Clock? Is kawaii. kawaii o'clock. We were already over this. Yeah. We were already over kawaii time. I sing the kawaii time song last Jingle. last podcast. Oh, there's a. Oh, we have an official kawaii time. No, it's the... not. It's not official at all. Oh. It was just the Adventure Time theme song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh it's a DMCA <laughs> jingle. Understood. Yes, sort of, kind of. We changed the words just a little bit. Just, it's, just enough. Just a little bit. It's ooh ooh. Do hours. I have to do it again? No. Do I have to remind people? No, they have to go watch the previous does episode this, to does enjoy. Does this episode have to, to get it. taken down as well? <laughs> Do all Shits. the episodes have to suffer for one episode's mistake? <sighs> Good. Good. Speaking of mistakes. Uh-oh. Jay, I heard you bought an orange for $4.44. It might not be a mistake. A that fun. sounds really unlucky. It is. A very unlucky Why is it number. unlucky? Because it's all the, the fours. It's, the yon, it's death. It's yeah, it's but shitty. in other some other cultures, fours is not unlucky. That's Which? it's not a universal thing. That that's true. I mean, if you were in Las Vegas, that's. I mean, only we live in Canada. I believe off of the the big. We we live in Canada. I believe prize. in the indigenous community. Four is lucky. Really? Is it really? So yeah, I think I've heard something akin to that. I'm just saying. Oh, that's why cool. Why we? Why yeah, we that's gotta, cool. If true. Well, we yeah, why are we why are well, we, we painting your that. orange purse pur- purchase with a, a negative super, brush? I am not a superstitious person. I don't give. <laughs> okay, so shits. why did you splurge on a four dollar and forty four cent orange? Why does anyone splurge on? <laughs> because they feel like they deserve a treat. <laughs> Honestly, a treat. This it's because it was orange. the ugliest orange I've ever seen in my life. How what? is an orange possibly ugly? How is how is an orange ugly? Uh, I mean, maybe if it has like the, the 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 brown like webbing on the outside of it, you know, when the I'm gonna the I, of like the you know, it's rind. very good. This is extremely good content uh, for an audio podcast, but I'm yeah. going to send a picture of it into the channel. I will oh, attempt to describe the orange. Okay, so it's a very lumpy orange. Uh, the top oh, of the oh orange is like uh, extra really... lumpy, but it's extremely lumpy all the way around. It, uh, what does this look like? Like there, I've seen something this lumpy before. Do you know that the 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 one horror manga, uh, Tomie? Yes. No. What, is that the one where the guy like squeezes his face? And all of the no pus idea. comes out of every single Ew, That I don't sounds think that's, disgusting. I don't think that's Tomie. But I, I would know say what you mean. this looks like more of a gourd. Like yes, a pumpkin. Yes. It looks like a pumpkin. Yeah, but like an maybe, extra lumpy pumpkin. Yeah. And and and, and it doesn't look maybe like pump, pumpkin's not the right word, but like a type of squash, the type of squash that has that very that is like really cratery. Wrinkly. 
exterior. That's what that looks there like. Is, there is not a single smooth face on this. No, room. there isn't. No. It's yeah. very like tumorous. Yes. It's not it looks a like tumor. it has many growths on it. But yeah, um, but, I mean, okay. is this a special kind of orange? Yeah, like, I've what seen kind these. of orange costs four dollars and change? Is I mean, it was big? okay. It all, it tasted like an orange. There was was nothing... it smooth? Okay, so you know how navel orange is when you peel it? Like, the peel is pretty uniformly, th- like, thickness. It's it was easy uniform to peel. Thickness. Okay. Yeah, like, like uh, the, 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 it was easy to peel. The pith was easy to remove. And then, like, you know the how, okay, going back to the navel orange sort uniformly of Uniformly sized. Uh-huh. Yeah. I would say that, like, when you take a... What is it? It's not a slice. What's what's the actual segment? Like an orange segment, a right? Segment? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. A okay, navel yeah. orange, the the interior pulp of each segment is kind of textured. Like it, it it's 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 a little bit more thick skinned, right? Yeah. As opposed to like yeah. a mandarin okay. orange, where the individual pulp bits are the flesh fairly, just kind of comes out. Yeah, like it, it's yeah. very smooth. It's very divided. It's more like that. I wouldn't say it was particularly... It wasn't particularly special. It smelled very citrusy, but that's also not that special. I am not that's saying... That's just by so much surface area. I'm, I'm sure by yeah. orange standards, such a lumpy orange has double the amount of surface area as the average Yeah, orange. I would probably say that it was basically a mandarin orange if it was the size of a navel Lumpy. Orange. Yeah, so okay. it was just big. It was just really big. Yeah, like a um, big now, mandarin orange. Four dollars isn't that much money, but for a single fruit, I feel like it is. But it's a big I mean, fruit. Is this encroaching so, on Japanese pricing for fruit? I though, was just really? gonna say, like I like when I was in Japan and I was there with my mom as well, and she was just like, Oh, cool, they've got like the sort of more expensive fruit. She was really into like the muscat grapes that you can get mm-hmm. that are like Yeah, you know, I love they're, those. they're like fifteen they're season, to twenty so bucks yummy. for like which is which is more a bunch expensive. of grapes yeah for the bunch of grapes that's like uh you know you get there's probably about what 30 grapes on a bunch or something like that which is yeah like less and, and they're all like large and globular and whatnot i mean those were yeah. pretty good and that was kind of a treat uh i'm trying to think of i didn't get any i guess we got some fancy pears but we didn't get any much else because nice. we, we went in the winter time so it's not exactly like prime not in season yeah, yeah. Fruit season but because and... because in the fall musket grapes are are in season um mm-hmm. when i was there in october they did daifuku with musket Ooh. inside instead of a strawberry yeah. which you know the Ooh. standard like strawberry daifuku but this Yum. time with like the musket inside it, that was really, really good. Mm. And when you pay for it, they make sure they tell you specifically, please consume before tomorrow because it's at its peak freshness now. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, it was good. I remember I spoke once with my one of my Japanese friends about uh, watermelons, like the the prime sort of. The uh, gift, the perfect watermelon. Watermelons, right? Mm-hmm. Where they're costing like eighty dollars for a, for a single watermelon. And God damn! They described it as like you know, it's extra juicy, it's extra sweet. And it is. It I is. I don't begrudge them that. I just not ten I times sweeter that's, or ten times that's, juicier though. That's exactly if it's it. worth it to you, then it's worth it to you. It is true. Exactly. And, and again, I wanna I wanna make sure like people they like they have regular watermelons. People you have to understand yeah, that. They like do. people you just all go the time buy they're like regular normal watermelon. Yeah, they're like, Oh, they only have the crazy expensive high no. quality fruit thing. It's like no, no, no those are, they those have are gifts. I said, yeah, they're a gift, they're they're a special occasion. Yeah, uh, they're thing. like a like a you know like a graduation gift or like a congratulations new on job. your wedding or like yeah. uh, or it's like a new, new year's gift, promotion. new job. Yeah, like yeah it's, exactly. Yeah. It's a celebratory thing. It's yeah. special. It's it's the it's a it's a it's a gift in the same way that you might buy someone off their wedding a yeah. gift off their wedding registry. Yeah, and, and but I this think... is a purely an experience, right? Like this yes. is a gift yeah. that's meant to be experienced and enjoyed and shared with family and friends. I think it's yeah. in the same vein as like people can justify it, like having wagyu. Right, yeah, like sure. like you can have your regular, yeah. like you know sirloin steak or ribeye or whatever that's uh 
or that's still really good. But it's then like you getting the purge. fifteen year rum. Well, so versus I was the five year rum. Well, I was about to explain. They'll both get you just as drunk. No, <laughs> it's a different experience. So I was about to explain that the last time I was in Jamaica, I bought a very expensive bottle of rum. Yes, you did. Um, I bought a twenty one year um, Appleton Estate rum. So that did. alcohol can drink. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. That alcohol is old enough to get, you know, a discount on its driver driving insurance. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, I get it. And, like, was it an expensive purchase? It was. It was, like, over $300. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and one thing that I remember jumped out was um, the sort of curator, that, you know, the staff who are there who are showing you, like, the different, you know, um, all the different rums and stuff and which ones you can buy. They're like, don't keep them in the bottle. They're already done aging. Yep. They're not going to get, you know, they're not going to get, get more mature or become nor- more valuable or yeah. become better tasting or anything mm-hmm. just by leaving them sealed in the bottle. Mm-hmm. The minute they That's left what the they cask, want you to think. Well, it is the thing. <laughs> the minute they leave the cask, they're not they're not getting yeah. any older, they're not getting any better. Not so, every you know, alcohol ages. Uh I don't know if exactly. everyone knows that. Yeah, not every all alcohol ages and many of them do not age well in the bottle. Yes. Yes. Um very true. Um, I'm exceptionally certain, though, that lumpy oranges especially age poorly. <laughs> I, I'm definitely sure they are. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it's a matter of like... I'm sure like after two weeks, you probably don't want them. Yes. I think you need to eat it when you get it. Maybe it gets or lumpier, like, though. The... Maybe it does. Maybe it gets bumpier. Okay, so the, but... the baker in me wants to know, does this orange create exceptionally good orange zest? It has to. That's what I would... Honestly, I... So I... I bought this at like a tnt which is like the, you know the, one of the big asian markets i was just like walking by i was like okay i'll get this i don't care i i had i already had lunch or dinner or whatever it was at the time and i was just like oh an orange i could buy for four dollars and it's kind of just dessert it's just weird it's, it's dessert yeah at that point i didn't really like i thought about it as someone who cooks i was like should i take this peel home because it was very yeah, like wanna... it was very citrusy smelling. It was nice, and there's so much surface yeah. area to yeah. zest. That you would so just I would say, from yeah, it. like I, I didn't take it home because at the end of the day, it was kind of just a. Uh, you were out. It, it was an impulse buy, you know, and I wasn't mm-hmm. taking it home. I, I literally peeled it at the food court area and I just ate it there and whatnot. I guess a good orange, but like I feel like having orange peel in your pocket for later <laughs> has the same energy as storing spaghetti in your pockets. <laughs> I right. feel like I'll this was a missed opportunity it. to <laughs> to try lumpy zest. But yeah, I feel yes. like uh, as zest. as a if you want that fruit to multitask for you, I think it's a great fruit for that. Actually, not yeah. to be confused with grapefruit. <laughs> yes, that's true. Those are different. A fruits. great fruit. Yeah, yes. it's a, it's great. a like it's a very good candidate for it because there's so much to zest, and you could add it to a really good dish just to. Brighten it up with some fragrance. Citrus, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Anyway, that's my weird little diatribe to share. Continue on with that the rest cool. of the podcast, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did not come here to only talk about oranges. Yeah. I mean, I'm very impressed about that you splurged. Is pretty damn good. It is pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. it must feel really Hell good. Yeah. I feel like this is one of those. I feel good about the splurge moments. Yeah, one of those weird little mm-hmm. things. It's a good little treat. Yeah. yeah. Little treat. One of those little miracles in life. But Who knows? Um, speaking of speaking of feeling good, though, I have wrecked my hamstrings, and they Ellie. are deliciously sore. Horribly deliciously are sore. Are they delicious because it's ham? That doesn't sound very good at all. It's hammy. Hammy. Stretching them hammies. Um, so what, what we did yesterday, because... Next week, or sorry, in in a, in a day or so, or possibly on the day this podcast releases, uh, we expect to have practice winter. At least for, like, the last time, I think, knocking on wood. Yeah, yeah. yeah but just like a little bit of We expect to have a snow. practice winter. It's no longer winter because we know it's spring. We've already passed the first day of official spring. But yeah. it's practice we're winter. Let, just, just a little reminder. For next time. Yeah. So uh, because we're expecting some moisture, some precipitation, uh, we cleaned up the yard I got up at like Mm. 8 a.m., you know, went downstairs, made breakfast, went out into the yard to all clean up. There was all this dead stuff 
that we left there over the winter because you're supposed to let your stuff over winter with all of the dead foliage around it to protect like the new buds and the bulbs that are in the dirt and all that other stuff. Yeah. So now that that stuff is actually dried out because it actually didn't dry out and die until like probably a couple of weeks ago we mm -hmm. pulled off all the dead stuff you know uh we put on some really thick gloves and still got spined by our raspberry bushes when we took off Yay. all the dead leaves like we did everything we like raked the yard all the dead stuff got raked off of it i reseeded some new micro clover in so it has new moisture to, to support those little seedlings nice. next week and like we did all this in like the span of an hour God and, and like you're speed running the yard work. Indeed. You, you don't realize how much squatting you're doing because you're yes. low to the ground and pulling up all the dead foliage off your irises, uh -huh. which have, by the way, already started coming up. They're a solid three inches tall already. Oh, yeah. Let's go. They're ready to go. They're happy. They're like, they're, yes, I am they're free. ready. And all of the succulents that we have back there, all of those, like the ones that actually overwinter well in Calgary and the dirt. Yeah. Actually is all coming up already. We've got little florets coming up. And I'm oh, just like, cute. dang, y'all are really ready to go. Definitely a sign that we had a really mild winter. Yeah, we definitely did. And so, unfortunately, it means that uh, less and less stuff got decomposed over the winter. That is very true. Yeah. However, what did decompose is doing fantastically and they're coming Yay! back. But well, like, awesome. so, so my hamstrings are super sore today as we we're wandering around Ikea trying to find potted plants for all those babies my aloe plant decided to have over the mm -hmm. winter. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like dying every time I have like, to I'm like sore. get down to look at something on some of the lower shelves. I'm like, oh, I think I need one of those get down. I'm like, oh, I don't my need legs. Like, I'm, I'm not coming back up. Here. I need someone to help me. You're like, I'm stuck here forever. Uh, I guess I live here now. Yeah. On my on a I'm on a citrus bent right now, uh, clearly because oh, yeah? I realize what I'm talking about. Um, speaking of like uh, sprouts and seedlings and you know mm -hmm. gardening, I live in an apartment. I don't have access to like mm -hmm. my own planting area so much, so I just really have like windowsill type plants. Um, but I do have a nice south facing window that gets a lot of sun, um, mm. so that is good for the planties, and they've been coming up real quick. Um, my, I, 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 I think I've mentioned that I just grow random things. Like I, I don't, I'm not growing plan? them. Well, yeah, I don't grow them for Did you like... plant one of the seeds from your $4 orange? <laughs> there was no, excuse you. It's a $4 orange. They come with no seeds. Uh, ah, yeah, my God. Mm. Capitalism has bred out the reproductive means of obtaining more oranges over the course of <laughs> they a They did that to Actually, bananas ages ago. So yeah. we're and a lot of oranges, new. a lot of oranges, uh, like of the, let's say like Florida kind, like the, the navels and things like that. They are yeah. also clones. Uh, most of yeah, them are, are actually just... Uh, grafts onto other trees and stuff. But other anyways, trees. aside from yeah. that... Um... There's actually a very good reason for that. It takes like a decade for a tree to mature from a uh, seed. Yes. Whereas if you graft the tree, it will start producing fruit like the next year. Yes. Yeah, that's why it's actually a lot more Speed valuable running. to have like a mini orchard. Yeah. Uh, anyway. I, again, on my, on my citrus bent, uh, my pomelo seeds all of them sprouted i have Ooh, wow. so many impressive let's go pomelo. strong little pomelo uh uh seedlings Sprouts. and yeah. they're all like they've even like they've already transitioned from uh sprouts like where they're all like you know white stemmed Just little, to the actual yeah. green stemmed little wow. dudes wow Right, they're like, I'm here. I'm a real tree. Yeah. Pomelo. Okay, so remind me. I'm pretty sure I'm not remembering this wrong, but pomelo seeds are like big, tough little things. Yeah, like, I they're mean, big. They are not. They don't look. I would say like an actual. It, they're not like an orange seed. Where no, an orange not seed at all. Has like that little ovular look, like shape. I would say, if I had to describe what a pomelo seed looks like, it's a wrinkled looking front tooth <laughs> because it's square it's like it, it's it's kind of this rectangular square. square sort of 
Like you can look They're up like... pomelo seed. Oh, what the heck? Yeah, yeah. No, it's like a little wrinkly thing. It yeah. almost They're... looks like it sort of it looks, looks like, like a tooth. The... Some of them it look looks like, like teeth. An... It looks like an individual clove of garlic if it had all of the paper on it. Mm, maybe, but an old, but big. but like a garlic has like, like er, three sides, like a to little it. clove. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Not like the whole head of garlic, like the individual clove. No, but that's what I'm saying. A clove has three sides to it. I think a, a lot of pomelo seeds true. kind of sometimes just have two. What I'm saying yeah, is, like if you look up a seed, flat. yeah, a picture of it. Some of them are really flat, and they kind of look like your front teeth sometimes. They do kind of look like teeth. I do see that. Yeah, I remember someone telling me they thought they had a fingernail in in their pomelo, and it was just the seed. It was just the seed. Yeah. Damn. Just like yeah, a whole like fingernail it. if you lifted it from a finger. Yeah, it does look like keratin. Oh, that's happened oh, to me once before. God. My, uh, I think my Weird. avocado plant is almost dead though. Really? Oh, oh no. Hey. It had a good run. What happened? Uh, I think I just did not. Um, what do you call it? Uh, prune it prune uh, well enough. Like, like I think I I mispruned it, and mm. it's probably on last legs. But in that same pot that it's growing in, or maybe is dying in, there's seedlings coming out of it, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> I would assume it's more avocado, maybe? I don't think so, because I didn't I don't plant know. anything in there, and I didn't ever have another. Like, an avocado seed, obviously, is a big brown, you know, ball Pit of its own. Thing. So like, yeah. I don't know. I have no idea what's growing in it. It could be it, more but... sprouts. It could be. Okay, so um, avocado trees, they are a tree. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happens when trees start getting uh, unhealthy, like, on the on the tops and, like, the actual edges of their branches, if they start getting unhealthy there, what they do is they start sending out shoots from the trunk. So if yeah. if it's doing that, it might actually be fighting to come back. It might be It'll just come back with more of a bush. So I'm going to live again. It'll be interesting because it's like, if it does, it would be coming from, I guess the pit again or something. Cause it, like, it's not coming from the, the branch. Like the, the, it's the not trunk. coming from the trunk. Yeah. Cause it's, it's the, the the avocado plant is maybe a year and a half old. It doesn't have enough. Yeah, it's a baby. Yeah, it doesn't have like like. I again, great audio content, uh, or visual content <laughs> for another <laughs> podcast. But like, I just found this picture online. Like, that's about the size, more or less, of my avocado plant. And then you see how like the stem is so about seven about, or eight inches tall. Yeah, it's, it's a little. yeah, it's about that, and then like the thinness of that uh, stem is about the same. So yeah, like I don't think anything's gonna like come from that stick. stem. I think it's either coming from the root, or I forgot that I planted something, or something else just happened to germinate in there. I don't know. I think <laughs> it could well, be fighting to out. come back. You have a mystery of a mystery plant. You It'd should nice. you should wait and see how it how it does. Oh yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna dump it. I'm just gonna wait and yeah. Don't make grow, the I'm mistake sure. I made. I was did like, oh, this kill, aloe plant did you kill is. A plant? Oh, I was like, oh, this aloe plant fell over. Like, like I had an mm. aloe plant that a friend gifted me, mm-hmm. and uh, it was really like it was trying to grow, like it was always growing new leaves, mm-hmm. but it was just so poorly structured, like so weakly structured, it was like falling over. It wasn't staying upright. Like, did you think it all. was sick? I thought it was just like I, I didn't know what was wrong with it. Like maybe I was in the wrong soil. Maybe I w- it didn't get enough nutrients. Like I tried, mm-hmm. and it just kind of sh- started shriveling up. So I was like, uh, okay, like I, it's not the water. I water you regularly. It's not the nutrients. I'm giving you fertilizer. I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. So I thought that like something had just gone horribly wrong, and it needed to be repotted. I tried repotting it, and it didn't help it. So I was like, I don't know what to do. So I threw it in the compost pile, and then it decided to just proliferate. And have babies, so many babies, and so I had like, to bring ah. it. Sometimes I brought it back aloe is in. Just ugly. No, I brought it back in. It had become super plump while it, it was, was like, sitting I'm in the dead. compost, and like I had to bring it back in to, for for the winter. And then I mm. also had to dig up all of its new babies and bring those back in. And that's why I needed to go to IKEA because I needed potters <laughs> for the new babies because the babies are doing so well. They're having babies. I'm confused. Babies on babies on it babies. Happened. It was like, like, oh, you gave me nutrients. Aloe, being a succulent, thrives on neglect. I know you said that. The more you mistreat it, the more you mistreat it, the stronger it's it becomes. But like, 
I know you've told me that, but like I can't explain how this aloe plant just like suddenly like got steroids and got huge, beefy, you, you and juicy. You put it in the compost plump. pile. I mean, you put it in the compost, pile. compost pile. That's basically that's basically steroids. Gave the yeah. infinite food. Yeah, it was <laughs> like I have the resources. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't fertilizing it enough. I don't know. But whatever the case, it now has many, many, many children, and I need to start giving these away. So I'm giving Dio Yay. one. I'll give Angelo Yay. one. I'll give I Jay one. I have too much aloe. I don't have <laughs> I've got any, like I don't five have aloe any, uh, plants in my house. I have no succulents, but that's because, I don't know, I don't find succulents to be that interesting to raise. Aloe like is oh, at like least a functional though. plant to have. If you ever get sunburned, you just yeah. cut some off and smear it on yourself. Yeah. Exactly. It's so good. I thought and that's you have why to I process. have it. So I get sunburned have, all the time. I thought you have to process No, you don't. Nope. Nope. You literally don't. If you're you feeling do if you extra good, it. you can just, like, use a knife to cut it open instead of just, like, rubbing it, it between your hands or something. But then the goo comes Weird. out immediately and you just, like, slather it on yourself and it feels so good. If you want to take it to the next level, before you go out for the day, take a few leaves off the aloe, put them in the freezer... And then take the frozen aloe out after and oh, use that the nice same and way. Cooling. And it's like, it's so good. Do so you want to become a goo man? You yes, could be a goo, goo man. Yes. man. Goo mans. Reject human, become goo man. Become goo. Suddenly, suddenly the next time we see Jay, it's just like, he's, he's got like baby butt skin. Yeah, he's like super, super moisturized. Somewhere out skin. there, a baby is yep. missing its butt skin. <laughs> <laughs> That's my cosplay. <laughs> oh no! For oh, Odafest, no. made of boo, which isn't very Let's far guess. away. It is not very far away, and in in proper cosplayer fashion, I am like working down to the wire because mm -hmm. of course I am. Because like, of course cosplayer. you are. Are you, mean, are you meaning here. that we're actually talking about convention related nerd? <laughs> so I'm nerd talking stuff about on an, on oranges the, on and the plants podcast? for the last half hour. <laughs> No Weird. way. No way. That? Anyone so new who is listening to this podcast is very confused. They're like, yeah. why are these guys talking about like cosplay? That's strange. Why? I'm listening to this podcast to listen about weebery and nerdity. That's true. Yep. So anyway. I'm I'm working on I'm working on a cosplay and I have this thing in my brain where my brain is like, I can't just make the cosplay. I have to like do a bunch of unnecessary research into how the the garment that the character is 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 wearing like how how would that garment work like how is that garment supposed to be you know used like what is its actual what is its functional purpose and how well, would like, it be manufactured like how would it be made to give to cut you some slack there if you go to like with like Genshin Impact characters. Oh, where they make no sense. Their costumes make no sense. They don't. So if you just look at it based off of reference pictures, you can't figure out it's what true. You can't figure out what there. the heck is going on. I know. Uh, I and so looked. even in some simpler looking cosplays, it's not obvious what the fabric is actually doing. So going mm -hmm. to the source material mm -hmm. helps. It does. Um, and so I will cut myself some slack. But um, for this one cosplay, I went a little too silly with it. You went um, a little I went far? a little too deep. I went a little too deep. Oh, boy. Because I was like, oh, the character I'm doing is 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 G uh, Geto Suguru from Jujutsu Kaisen. And I'm specifically doing the outfit um, that he wears for most of the series, which is where he's in a Buddhist monk's, specifically a Zen, a Zen Buddhist monk's robe. Mm. And I was like... Yeah, I could just make, you know, I could just make a robe that looks close enough and call it a day. But the thing that jumped out at me was like in the author's notes, he's specifically wearing a ceremonial garment, a ceremonial robe called a Gojo Gesa, um, which is like if that's a real robe that is worn over specific monk's robes. And I was like, OK, well, I want to see if I can figure out how to make not only this 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 ceremonial robe, but the, the full garments. So I found a bunch of patterns to do this. And I've learned something. <laughs> Japanese patterns are really hard for my brain. Um, like like the, the fabric patterns. Yes, the fabric yeah. patterns are really hard. And it, the reason I think it's so confusing is I'm very used to like 
Western style sewing. And Western style sewing is very much like you get a pattern, you cut the pattern out, mm-hmm. you put the, you know, the pieces on the fabric, you cut the pieces out and you put them together. Yeah. And usually there's some instructions on like how to put them together mm-hmm. and to make sure that, you know, you account for ease or you account for fit or tailoring or whatever else. Um, and like most lots of Western clothes are very fitted garments. Like they're typically cut to a certain size um, and, and they're meant to be fitted. Uh, a lot of traditional Japanese garments, in fact, I would say most traditional Japanese garments are not cut like this at all. Interesting. In fact, most of them are not cut. Um, ah, yeah. The idea is, generally it. speaking, for like kimono or kimono sort of similar style articles of clothing, that you get a big sort of 45 inch bolt of fabric. Yep. And you cut rectangles. Yep. And the rectangles are folded um, to approximate the shape of whatever garment you're making. And you basically only cut in slits to make things fit. Yep. And then you you don't even you don't even trim seam allowance. You fold seam allowance into everything. So if you have a bunch of you putting on the collar of your kimono, mm-hmm. you don't cut the 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 allowance around the the shoulder or the neckline to make it fit. You fold it in. Interesting. Which is very confusing for my brain because my brain is so used to you cut the piece to fit and then you check the fit. And then if yeah. it doesn't fit, you cut more. There's yeah. there's none of that here. So ah, it, it's been very confusing yeah. for my brain because, you know, all of these these patterns are designed with these admittedly very cool to learn about traditional techniques and sewing techniques and ways of folding. And, and the whole idea is that you don't waste fabric. Yeah. Um, you create no waste because every single piece of the bolt goes into the kimono, even if it's mm-hmm. not necessary. Uh, but it makes things very confusing to read because you have a lot of these very esoteric and very specific measurement terms for mm. where things go mm-hmm. that are in Japanese that mm-hmm. don't mm-hmm. make, you know, a lot of sense to someone who isn't Japanese. Yeah, like, like, me. The context. like for example... Uh, in the in the case that you're trying to make, the basic unit of measurement is measured from the tip of your finger down to your elbow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And all of the other measurements are based on that length. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. And so okay. you have to start doing a lot of math to figure out what the measurements and everything should be. Mm. And every time, every time the instructions would reference something... They would use the traditional Japanese name for it. And that's, I'm not saying that that's the bad thing. Yeah, right? it's not a bad thing, but it definitely was confusing. It's a learning curve. It's confusing. Yes. Because suddenly, yeah. it, understandably, you can be like, ah, yes, this, this chu measurement means the, the, the tip to elbow measurement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this other measurement that I don't understand exactly is three times the chu measurement plus five times the chu measurement minus four times the the, the double finger width yes that this yeah. that this one. reminds me very yeah. much of what it's like for someone who has never taken a baking class to oh, try to follow seven. baking instructions yes like there's a lot of i forgot expect- about the divided by seven yeah that oh divided by seven <laughs> Oh, yes, it's no. very, it's, it's and, and it's basically, it's because some things are five times something and other yeah. things are seven times something. And it, yeah. it, it is exactly like going to a baking class and you've never baked before, where you're just like, they're referencing terms, like, and, and techniques that you don't know, like you just fold don't in know. an egg, like what does folding an egg mean? Or yeah, what, like, what is sifting flour? How do I do that? What's the right way to measure using measuring cups? What's the, like, how do I cream yeah. sugar and butter together nicely? Like, there's so many yes. things. You don't exactly. know unless you've been in a class where someone taught has, you someone what those fundamentals are. What it means. And then once you have the fundamentals, like once I, I remember, so I'm starting with the, I started with the underwear, which is called juban. And there's different kinds of juban, but it's basically kimono underwear. Because the cool. idea traditionally is that, you know, a kimono would be made out of silk or cotton or some other, you know, like fairly nice fabric mm. um some fairly nice natural fabric and the idea is that it's a big it's a big long garment like it's a, it no matter what like they're they're some they're somewhat they're always somewhat large and the idea is that you when you tie them closed that's how you fit them 
and you fold in and wrap the excess around your body until it's fitted and you have a nice rectangular shape. Right. Um, but it's a lot of it's a lot of clothing. It's a lot of fabric. And so washing it is difficult mm-hmm. and washing it is expensive. And so the yes. idea is you have a sort of slip that you wear underneath. That's that you wash like instead of the kimono. Exactly. And that's yes. what keeps your kimono clean. Uh, yes. So I'm making the juban, which is serves that purpose. And so the nice thing is... It's a good test run because the instructions are exactly the same. It's just a little bit shorter. Because the idea mm-hmm. is you don't want it to hang out of your kimono. So it's mm-hmm. a little bit shorter than a regular kimono. Mm-hmm. And But it has been, holy smokes, an experience. I've read two different 45-page documents wow. on how these, these garments are all supposed to come together. And I'm like, I should have just, if I had just treated this like a costume, yes, we would be done. Like, yes. we would be done. And instead, I'm figuring out, like, how there's, like, there's different kinds of stitches. Because the idea is that, again, with a traditional garment, you wouldn't have a sewing machine mm-hmm. to make these. You mm-hmm. would do this. So how how do you sew this by hand? And how do all of these pieces? One of the biggest things that I figured out that I never understood this before. You'll see some in anime. You'll sometimes see characters wear kimono. And they just have, like, one collar. And it's one big band. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you'll see characters and it almost looks like there's a break in the collar right around where the collarbone is. Yep. Yeah. And I was always like, what is that? Um, And the answer is, um, for all the cosplayers of the world, this might be useful in your searches. Um, (laughs) Your collar is called your eri. um, And you might have a han eri, which is the shorter one. Uh Um, And the idea with the shorter one, so the long one is closed. It's closed in with the garment. The shorter one is open. There's actually, it's open in the bottom. And you can put a stiffener, um, usually made out of plastic or buckram or something, something thick and heavy, called an eddy shin that goes inside and it keeps your collar up. Mm, it's basically like the collar stays on a yes. gesture except for yes. kimono. Exactly. That's exactly mm. what it is. And I was like, nice. oh, that's what that's for. I get it now. So I'm like, oh, I really am actually learning like cool things by doing this. Like I'm learning something I, n- I, w- I never would have learned this otherwise. Mm. But I'm like, oh, my God, if I had just made a costume, if I only... wouldn't be suffering. <laughs> if only you had treated this like it was a long term project. <laughs> Indeed. Or if I, you know, had planned ahead um, and and started, I, I did the thing I always did, mm. which I always do, which is I decided for the Gojo Gesa that I would order fabric. Um, the fabric is going to arrive April 26th. Oh my what? <laughs> it's going to arrive April 26th. You better have everything figured out by then. Yeah, that's my goal. My plan now is, okay, we're going to get 100% of the costume done and ready to go so that the last week before the convention is just sewing this one garment i mean the fabric's only going to arrive if the boat it's arriving on doesn't smash into a bridge (laughs) that is true or it doesn't get held for duties Uh, oh i'm i believe believe. we we pray to the cosplay gods yeah that it arrives on time yeah and you know this is all cool and everything but like what does this have to do with citrus which is my true passion here. Nothing. I mean, it's citrus colored fabric. Some of the fabric actually. is green and yellow. Yeah, it's citrus colored. Lime, lemon, and My lemons. God. Yeah. It all comes back. It's citrus back. colored. Yeah, because it's green and gold. So it's it's, it's citrus colored. Nice. Yes. Mm-hmm. We're all Everything limeys returns. on this blessed podcast. All, all, all things return to citrus. All things, all roads lead to citrus. Yes. Even actually, yes, now that Jay has said that, like half the things I looked at yesterday were actually citrus themed. Oh uh, yeah! I went to I went to the cuties market yesterday, and like someone was selling oh, nice. crochet crochet plushies, uh, and they Aww. were they were fruit themed. There was like a crochet lemon and a crochet banana. <laughs> That's Aww. so cute! I adorable. love when people make little like I love for some reason food themed like plush and art is just so timeless and cute. And yeah, wonderful. food it's true. is timeless. Who would food is it? very timeless. Yeah. Like, um, so so the cuties market yesterday was Ghibli themed. So they had a lot of uh, really iconic Ghibli themes like playing on the speaker, so the whole hall could hear it. Uh, and then while you're walking through this hall, it's like 
All right, we've got anime themed tea, anime themed candles, anime themed nail decals, which had lemons mm-hmm. on them, by the way, Jay. Uh, anime oh. themed like well, there's fan art there was like a, an actual like an artist had prints and stuff and they made tote bags as well so they had a lot of their prints um hand hand drawn onto tote bags and like it just it just keeps going the whole market was just full of really adorable things the funny thing that happened was that i ran into someone uh an a friend who's an artist they had fan art for me. They had printed it out, and they happened to be carrying it with them. Aww. And they said, Aww. hey, Nancy, you're Nancy. And I was like, hi, hello. I have hi, not Nancy. actually met you in person. Hello, how are you? They're like, great. I have your fan art in my backpack. And I was like, what? You're like, what? <laughs> Wait, have you been carrying this around the whole time? It's like, I just happened to have it with me today. And they pull it out. And it's it's gorgeous. It's a character that I voice. Aww. It's drawn. It's printed. It's it's beautiful. And I'm just like, I'm gonna carry this around with me forever. And I carried it around with me for like the rest of the day. And my friends wouldn't Yay! stop looking. Flex on the plebs. What was the character? Well, I'm not allowed to say. Oh, you're not allowed to say. Okay. I'm not allowed to say. I'm oh, podcast. I'll secret. tell you later. Oh. <laughs> I'm just curious because like out of NDAs, I understand. Out of any of us, like you obviously have involvement in I guess like peop uh, characters that people could have connection with. But for yourself, yeah. how much merchandise of any kind, whether official or fan made, do you have of characters that you've played? That I've played uh, I guess that depends a lot on if a character I've been has merch to begin with, but I do have <clears throat> an entire deck of Kumi's cards <laughs> from the very yeah. first anime I was ever in because a whole bunch that. of people, yeah, in the community just like put a deck together for me because I went looking so for it and I couldn't find it. It was rare enough that it wasn't something I could just like buy and put together. Mm. Uh, a whole bunch of people did for me, like as a as a community, they put it together for me. Mm. So that was I still have that. It's it's on it's in a very very lovely spot. I like, and now it gets some fan art to join it. I'm very excited. Nice, <laughs> nice. That was super sweet. Um, Is that the only yeah. thing you have? Uh. Other than this fan like art? we have uh we have like physical copies of games I've been in like actual PlayStation sure. discs. Mm-hmm. Uh but that doesn't really count. That's not really merch. I get that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean that's still really cool though. Yeah, I thought it was Being really like, cute. Like, oh yes. And, like, I have so this well drawn. hard copy of this fantastic game. Oh, and if you get to this part in the game, listen closely. Who's that? <laughs> it hurts. I, I know that one. That, that's my friend. It's me. I know, I know her. Still, that is very cool. I remember one point. Uh, Dio and I were browsing TikTok, and we come across an AFK Arena ad. Oh my God. And <laughs> it reminds me. It reminds me of the skit that you were in, mm-hmm. where you were that, that crying lady. I can't remember her name. Princess Theowen. But it was all about Princess Theowen and Angelo the Bard. <laughs> yup. <laughs> yup. Angelo the Bard tries to cheer up Princess Theowen because all she does is cry day and night. Oh. And everything he sings about is sad to her because she's lived this horrific, tragic life. He sings about loving Jesus. family and she cries because her entire like, family was slaughtered. Gone. And yeah. then he sings about cute cats and she cries because her cat died of depression. Like it she's was just, just like, it goes on and on. It just escalates for all eternity. Just he's like, escalates. why isn't my singing making her happy? I don't understand. I'm the greatest bard in the land. I should be able to cheer up a sad princess. Like, no. No, you're just making it worse. You're putting salt in the wound, my guy. So much salt, but yeah. In the end, they decided the only thing they could do was just put earplugs in. Yep. Just stop <laughs> listening. Wow. Let her cry it out. She'll she'll be okay. One of she'll these days, okay. one of these days, I'm gonna run across a Nancy roll in the wild before I knew it, knew it existed. It That's might be, be coming sooner than you think. 
Indeed, it could be. Oh. It could, it could be. be. We'll just have Nancy, to be out on could the you lookout. be the first person I know personally, as opposed to having met guests and that kind of thing? Can you be the first person to have a Wikipedia page for me? How about a that? Wikipedia Ooh. page. A Wikipedia yeah. page is a big. That's a big. Ti- that's a big. Yeah. I yeah. Feel yeah. Like... I want Nancy to to be big enough to have a Wikipedia. I mean, I would love to be big enough to uh, warrant one, but I'm not going to go and make a page for myself. Oh, yes. No, the idea is that someone no. makes one for you. That you've one made a day. name big enough for yourself that one day. someone makes like one to categorize like, yeah. and curate the history of your work. That is certainly a goal to dream for. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think I, I, was... I, I, I know a lot of people, but I don't believe I know... Again, someone on a personal level that does have a Wikipedia page. Who has page. a Wikipedia page about them. Yeah. I wonder if I, I do know I somebody do by, by, like, just by incidents, but I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I don't think. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think I know any. Comment below if you do know somebody. Yeah, if you do know someone who's got a Wikipedia page that you know personally, and then tell us about how it affects your relationship with them or, or how it has impacted yeah. their life. Hopefully positive. Name dropping your friends. And tell us how you found it. Yes. That reminds me, um, it's not exactly related, but I because I said name drop in Wikipedia. Um, this is like years ago. I don't think it would ever, well, it could probably work again just because. Don't do it though. Um somebody once got backstage at like a big concert show like like i don't know what it was but maybe it was let's say it was like mm-hmm. shambhala or some some kind of like that level of of concert it's huge it's a big deal yeah big event because they edited the performer's wikipedia page to say that oh this person's my brother and they went up to backstage security, showed the Wikipedia <gasps> article, and was no. like, "Oh my god!" And the guy no took way. it and was like, "The guy was like, yeah. yeah, that's true, that's facts." Yeah, it's Wikipedia. Oh no my god! Way. And it was not facts. Yeah, oh it was no. cap. Oh no! It's pretty good though, hey? Yike! Oh my gosh, that's so funny. It's true, like. For as much as like if Wikipedia... I edit Wikipedia to say that I'm the CEO of Activision Blizzard, do I get a paycheck? No, you'd have to convince the people who at accounts payable that you're the. CEO I can show of them the Wikipedia article though, and you have to get them to believe it, honey. Oh. so that they write you a check. But it's on Wikipedia though. Yeah. Do you I don't really know want to be known you. as the CEO of Activision Blizzard though? Like. Right, right now, yeah. today. Like, like, yeah. you, you, now you that Bobby Kotick has been kicked call. out, actually. You mean escorted out with a golden briefcase? Yeah. Honestly, I think I could turn it around. I believe in you. And I aspire to have the confidence that you have. Oh, I d- that's not even confidence. That's just basically <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure that I can run that company better by just not doing anything. Okay, fair, fair point. Fair point. I could run that Boeing not- better by... <laughs> Oof. Oh God! The number yeah, of things that have that. fallen yeah, off Boeing flights too. lately. Yeah. Yikes! Somehow it's a small miracle that it hasn't been Some, people. Yeah. Sometimes it's mm. sometimes it's individual crossed, parts. On wood. Sometimes it's the whole plane. Yay! Like there's a Yay! lot of companies that could literally be run better by a dog, and I can be that dog. <laughs> <laughs> this guy said, "I I'm taking the golden retriever boyfriend trope." Personally. <laughs> yeah. Very personally. Yeah. Anyways, I don't know how we got here, but here we are. <laughs> and it also happens to be the end of the episode. So goodbye now. Indeed. Bye-bye, everybody. See you next time. Woof. <laughs>